Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Oh boy, there we go. Alright. You guys remember Arkham City? I'm thinking about that right now. Wait, what? Am I supposed to be able to... Oh my god, not the whole thing, huh? Am I supposed to be able to tell that some of these are hot? Because the camera angle and the fact that there's a fucking pool of lava under me is not make that very conducive. This game has really run out its goodwill. Uh-huh. Oh, it's rising. The lava's rising. Okay. I'm cutting it a little close then. This is, see, here's the thing, right? I have often made reference to this, and one day I'll actually play it. Maybe with my wife, probably with my wife. She loves Devil May Cry. Um, but I've made reference to the fact that I think Devil May Cry 3, Dante's Awakening, is the best paced game of all time. Because it can distract the player with such wonderful spectacle. But the thing is, is that the spectacle never feels unwarranted, because everything that Dante can do in a cutscene, he can do in-game. And that was a significant part of the design decision. Like, we want Dante to do cool, dumb stuff, right? Like, at one point, Dante kicks a pool table into the air, and all the pool balls go everywhere. And he says, let's break, and he shoots the cue ball, and it hits. Uh, and it hits the cue ball, and then the cue ball hits every other ball, and all the balls fly into enemy heads, and they all die, and it's really cool. And that's silly, of course, but... They wanted you to actually be able to do stuff. So, like, at one point, Dante being goofy surfs on an enemy, and if you actually jump next to a down enemy and land on it, Dante will be on top of him, and if you hit the stick, he'll kick off. And then if you mash the gun button, he'll shoot guns in a circle, wildly spinning on this enemy, riding it like a skateboard. And that's a goofy cutscene thing, but you can totally do it in-game, and it's really stylish and fun. For comes the and so, like, the spectacle never feels unwarranted, because it's like, yeah, I can do that if I'm good, you know? Dante doesn't get hit in cutscenes because he's good. Dante will will style all over fools because he's good. And if I was good, I could do that. And when you watch max level Devil May Cry 3 plays, like, yes, people can do that. You can be cutscene Dante if you're just really good. <laughs> um, but another thing about... Well, yeah, that's weird. There's like a line on the screen. See that? On the left side? Or on the right side, rather? Um... But there's this thing that Devil May Cry does where, like, it very well balances, like, oh, you just had an annoying puzzle area? Okay, here's a really cool boss fight. So, like, before your first fight with Virgil, there's this really annoying area. But then you get a fight with Virgil, and it's what the game has been building up to for the last, like, hour or two. And it's really, really cool. Maybe, like, couple, maybe longer than that, actually. When I play Devil May Cry 3, you know, I'm skipping all the cutscenes and blowing through it at maximum pace, so. Is that an orrery? Uh, there's a message that appear here that appears frequently in Necromancer lore. Sometimes the key seems to enter their domains. The fourth week of the month of the Virgin of the Shadow... Of the Virgin the Shadow... The fourth week of the month of the Virgin... The shadow will be more powerful than the light, and the path of the abyss shall be revealed. I've been waiting for that day for months now, but it's time seems frozen since I've arrived. Okay. I don't know what that means, dude. Virgin. That's Virgo. That's Leo. Sagittarius. Day. What the hell day is this? Wait, is that... That's Libra. That's Virgo. Yeah, this is Scorpio. Because Scorpio is next to Sagittarius. And then the shadow. So, full eclipse, maybe? 
or full moon. Oh, these are just numbers. Can I see that a second time? The note? Oh, you can just brute force it. <laughs> well, okay. Oh, man. Here comes Griffith. So, what the hell was I talking about? Right, Devil May Cry 3. So, following Devil May Cry 3... Following the Virgil Battle 1 is the worst level in the game. But you get to do that level with uh, Devil Trigger unlocked. It's the first time Devil Trigger is unlocked in game for you. And so it's really cool because you're like, okay, this area is lame and the enemies are boring, but I have a cool new ability where I can hype up and, and you know, trigger my devil. Colors are movements. That was what the witch said before bringing me here. I didn't know what she meant, but now I'm sure it's related to these tiles in the ground. No period. What? Do I need to be blue? Do I need to be standing over here? Uh-huh. Oh, wait, maybe it's you. You, 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 you. What? Okay, so if I go down, and then I go this way, and then I go down, and then I circle around this, and then I go here... And then here, and then to it. Is that right? See, the thing is, is that I'm actually completely, like, lost on this puzzle. Like, I don't even know how to interact with it. Because normally you grab something to interact with it. And there's an invisible wall here, so I can't just jump it. Oh, the... Oh, my fucking cannon. Huh. Do I strike it with this? No. I don't even know how to begin to interact with this. Oh, hold on. Colors or movements. I've been using rocks to push the tiles, but they're broken now. I've lost most of my strength. I was right, each one of the tiles is a direction in which to move the magic fire. Hit the central tile once. Didn't I? Green, yellow, red, orange is... Did they have to make it orange, guys? Really? Red and orange aren't... God. 
Okay, so we need to make it go down, left, down, down. Down, left, down, down, right. So down, left, down, down, right. Is yellow, green, yellow, yellow, orange? Oh, this. Okay. I see. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So down. Green. Down. Down. Oh, what? I don't have enough. Oh, am I starting from the bottom? That makes more sense. So then what's up? I'm actually glad that I missed out on this. I think that's dumb that I have to, but like... No, that's left. I guess I could have brute forced it. I forgot that I could even swing down. Okay, up. Right. Up, up, left, down, left, and then two ups. What are the ups again? Red. So up. It's really hard to tell these apart, guys. Up. And then right. Up. Okay. Yeah, that's a weird puzzle. That's actually kind of a cool puzzle, I will say. Uh, it's just a little confusing. Very reminiscent of that, um, blood puzzle from earlier. Remember where you had to get that vampire guy's blood into the, uh, fix my weapon. When you had to get that vampire guy's blood into the, uh, the big thing from Hellboy 1. Black hole. That's a pretty cool effect for the black hole, actually. Grim Reaper. For some reason, the game's really loading, lagging out today. I don't know why. Reaper. Wow, yeah. The Reapers are manifestations of death itself. Their aspect depends on the belief of those who confront them. Most people perceive them as skeletal figures with scythe. Cool. So they don't even look like this. It's just that Gabriel Belmont believes that the Grim Reaper looks like that. Okay, am I doing the wrong thing? Oh, I was. That's not bad at all. Cool. Not enough mirror on that mirror, I think. Do you think that we started the eclipse? Do you think that's playing it up a bit too much? The fact that we started, you know, the eclipse? So what are we? Some kind of circle of the moon? 
Oh, good. This level. Why doesn't it do that every other time? This is a common thing in any, you know, jumping game. And, like, sometimes these things just move way too slow. Like, th this kind of annihilates the pace, don't you think? Like, I'm just standing here watching Belmont go up and down on these things. Do I have to kill you, actually? Hi yep. Haha. -ha. Yeah, look. I don't care, <laughs> Grim Reaper. I'll come back later when you're working for me. Also, these always remind me of Fusion Fall. Anyone remember that? Okay. I want to just sprint jump in, and I feel like I could, but like... Okay, there. Made it. I could, in fact. I just didn't want to screw it up. So... I was actually initially playing through the Castlevania games in order. I was playing one and then two. The thing is, is that my one LP, uh, uh, I eventually had to resort to cheats to get through it just because that game is really hard. Like, legitimately, that game is really, really hard, even now. Necromancer, most evil of all the schools of magic, can only be performed by followers of the Dark Lord of the Dead. Unlike the other two, the powers required, the powers necessary to control the energies of the disease are not easily acquired. Uh, yeah. W Moon and Blood are the other two. The Dark Lord only shares a part of his power with his followers who must die in order to use the abilities given. When dead, they're his thralls and the master can control them with power. So I'm not even fighting a real necromancer. I'm just fighting a shell who's the, uh... Like, extension of the proper true necromancer. Yeah, has there been a fucking, like, magical rock, paper, scissors going on here where, like, Unholy Beast will take more damage from lightning, or lightning, will take more damage from, uh, light magic this whole time? Because if so, I had no idea. I was just using light magic to get health back, and I was using dark magic to get, um, to do more damage. If that's not how it works, then I've... Then wow, is all. That's all I have to say. Why don't I get to you, Bozo? <laughs> Laid me out. I will be able to upload this in time for Halloween, which I'm pleased about. I did manage to do three episodes of this game. I really would have liked to do more, I promise. All right. Shway. But yeah, just circumstances. I had to go on vacation, got COVID, I had to recover from COVID. Also, uh, I have ADHD, I'm pretty sure. So I have motivation issues, and like, after the last experience was so, uh, I didn't want to uh, play this game again, that's all. Okay, cool. Is this going to be a thing where I have to squeeze through that little hole? Because that would be very simple and I would like that. Uh, nah. 
That gate does look a little washed out, so maybe it's a thing like... Oh boy. That little teleport thing that happens, I know it's because we're in hell. But like, could that have been happening the other hundred times that I was like falling in this game? You know, because like, think about how fast that is. That is lightning quick. But every other time we've fallen in this game. Oh man. That camera's obnoxious. Every other time we fall in this game, it's a really slow fall and it slows down and zooms in on us and we go red and like... It was always a little obnoxious. What? What the... You see me slide back? Okay. What is... Am I supposed to be here? Am I not supposed to be here? Oh, boy. Good Lord, what now? Am I supposed to be over here? Up, oh, steer it. Okay. As pu as like platforming puzzling goes, this isn't too bad, I guess. You know, if this was a Mega Man, I could just jump up all the way. And that might be cooler, you know. Is it weird that a random rank-and-file necromancer is stronger than a thing called Reaper? Like, shouldn't that be the Grim Reaper? Grim the Reaper, spelled with two E's. Okay. All right, now I'm in here. What the hell does that mean? Oh, we needed to power it up more. All right, well, bye, everyone. Hope I didn't need anything else in there. <laughs> the camera has to zoom past all of them. But yeah, um, I, th I think... A lot of people should really look at Devil May Cry 3 when they want to pay something. Because for a short action game, especially one that's only like 20 hours, Devil May Cry 3 is basically the ultimate. You know, it's just 20 missions. It's not like 14 chapters like this. And that's another thing. How do I get off of this again? Is that slow down or is that meant to be slow motion? But it's a, um Was I on low health? Shut up, Patrick. Really really guys? Did I blast too far away from the wall? All right. Did 
Just in case that was an actual one-hit kill. I mean, I guess it makes sense to be hit with the Grim Reaper Scythe and you die instantly. No, it's not a one-hit kill. It just does a lot of damage. Wow, a lot of damage. Give me that slurp, fam. Oh, here we go. But yeah, and then I think also, I mentioned this last episode, but Vanquish really does have a lot of good lessons for a lot of people to learn. Just like, oh, this game will be boring. This game will be short. Okay. That's not a bad thing. Think about all the Ubisofts that have come out. All of the people who are playing a Ubisoft game. And it's like, oh, you got to run around at a really slow speed until you find the upgrades. And you got to find all the little towers. And you got to find all the little collectibles. And that's how you beat this game. And you can't. You have to. And imagine, if you will. You know, us not having to do that. Imagine not having to do that. You know, there, there was talk of using a subscription service where you can rent a game digitally, like on live. You guys remember that? Or like a Game Pass. Um, and Ubisoft was talking about doing it for their own games. But like, if you pay $60 a month to rent a Ubisoft game, you will end up paying more for it. Because those games take so long to beat. What the hell? This game ran awesome in the last... For the last ever, this game has been running fine. I commented already that it's been a really well-optimized port. Ooh, whoa. Oh, great. Thanks. But yeah, like... I remember people talking about Dishonored and how it was so short and they wanted more. But the thing is, ultimately, it was much better that Dishonored was short... ...rather than that Dishonored was obnoxious to play. Especially in the area, uh, the area it came out in. And, like, Dishonored being short but fun and replayable, like, that's what you should really strive for. You should strive for a game to be fun and replayable no matter what. Also, I don't exactly understand what's happening here, but that's really cool. I guess he, like, break it and s he, he broke it and sucked, like, the, the elemental death magic out of it. This is... Okay, I've just realized what this is. They couldn't make a real level, so they've just made a bunch of combat arenas... And you just teleport from arena to arena. If it was a little shorter, I wouldn't have noticed. But they couldn't make a level. They couldn't make a fun, conceivable way for you to get around. And so the platforming challenges are all really short and contained onto very small things. Like, they could have just made this level to have, you know, a real way that you get around without teleporting. Oh, man. There we go. So, um... This is actually pretty relevant and recent. So, Konami has finally taken a leaf out of Capcom's book, and they're remaking Silent Hill 2. 
Because Capcom has made infinity money with remaking all the old uh, Resident Evils that everyone loves. It's kind of funny, because like, they remade RE1 like 15 years ago. Longer. And then they made RE2, and that was a bajillion dollars. And they were like, well, RE3, when RE3 came out, was just reused assets from RE2 anyway. So what if we reused assets from RE3, or reused assets from RE2, and then remade RE3 again? And then that made them even more money. And then they were like, okay, well, let's remake RE4 then. Like, obviously part of it is because RE3 was a lot simpler to make. Similar to the real RE3, the original RE3, that is. And it's why we've seen a bit of a gap, but also they want to let their other titles and actual Resident Evil sequels and not remakes breathe. Like, you know, RE7, 8, the 8 DLC. But Konami has finally seen that, and they're remaking Silent Hill 2, possibly their most well-received game of all time. Now, I'm a big Metal Gear fan, and I also love Castlevania, and Castlevania has been seeing a renaissance thanks to the anime coming out. And then when the anime drummed up a lot of stuff, they were like, okay, well, let's port Symphony of the Night again. And they did port Symphony of the Night again. But they finally put it out with um, Rondo of Blood, which a lot of people never got to play. They played the crappy SNES port. They played the weird 3D, 2D PSP remake. But a lot of people have never gotten a chance to actually play, you know, it. The actual Rondo of Blood. Which, strictly speaking, is Castlevania V. Like, I know they stopped numbering them because, like, Rondo of Blood only came out on the PC Engine. And, like, technically that's five. And then Generations only came out on Genesis. And that's technically seven. Or, alternatively, Shadow Magic Active, X, hold Y, 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 hold Y. Weird. Oh, yeah, it's the Ground Quakes. Ultimate Shadow. Left stick will make you charge randomly around. Cool. But, yeah, and, like, is Generations Castlevania 6? The Dracolich, wow. Really getting there, huh? <laughs> Look at him. So dark. So, so beautiful, beautiful, huh? He has come for his revenge. Oh, he's talking about me. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. I would say I'm dark and beautiful. Gabriel is too. Without pity. What but yeah, like is Generation supposed to be Castlevania 6 or 7? Or is Symphony of the Night 7 or 6? Or is the N64 one? And that's the weird thing about Castlevania because there was those weird console wars that happened in the 90s. That was weird for everyone. But the weird bifurcation that happened as a result like really screwed with things. And you must defeat it. Like... There were four Castlevania games that came out. One on the N64, one on the PC Engine, one on the Genesis, and one on the PS1. All in that era of the 90s. Alright. Big cutscene. His hair is actually textured and animated. But yeah, that weird era of like... What fucking Castlevania is this? Impressive, warrior. Meant that a lot of people Amazing never played Rondo. But they were like, hey, everyone has already bought Symphony of the Night at least once. I've bought Symphony of the Night twice, I think. But they were like, hey, let's make fucking Castlevania Symphony of the Night again. But let's put Rondo of Blood just so people will get maybe something new. Because like, a lot of people will be like, yeah, shit, I'll play Symphony of the Night again. But that sold really well, so they were like, oh, okay. Well, all of these games have been stuck on the Game Boy Advance or ported to the Nintendo eShop, which itself went under. Remember? That the you can't play a lot of Wii eShop games anymore. Look upon me, hypocrite. Gaze upon glorious death. And like the Castlevania Advance collection sold well. So maybe we'll get something with Castlevania? Because we're getting the anime, we're getting a lot of uh, ports of old games. Collections of old games, in fact, which is even better. And what's more, they're on PC, you know? Because, like, 
once Konami put out this thing called the Metal Gear Legacy Collection, which was one of the greatest things ever, because it had one through four and Peace Walker all on one disc. Well, all in one box, you know. Uh, disc technology wasn't that good. But the problem, and I have that, and it's uh, the best way to play Metal Gear, because you put in a disc, and you use the digital download code, and you can play Metal Gear Solid 1, and then you can put it in the disc and go right to Metal Gear Solid 2, and then 3, and then Peace Walker, and then play Metal Gear Solid 4. And at the time, it was every Metal Gear Solid game released. And you can technically use the PS3 ports of Ground Zeroes and uh, Phantom Pain, but they're not as good. And you can use the PS3 version of Revengeance. And then the PS3 becomes the ultimate Metal Gear console, but only because Metal Gear Solid 1 was ported very scarcely, and Metal Gear Solid 4 was only released for the PS3. But the problem is that that collection and those games are trapped on the PS3. And so now, the best way to play a Metal Gear... Period. The best way to play Metal Gear is to own a PS3. Draco Lich Titan. Necromancers are evil wizards who control the dead with dark powers. The most common belief is the power is limited to deceased humans, but in fact, it encompasses all dead. As demonstrated by this monster, the reanimated carcass of a dragon. This massive creature, a remnant of our prehistoric past, whoa, that's cool, died long before the necromancers came to the same. It was buried under tons of rock, eventually becoming a fossil. When the Dark Lord built his fortress in this desolate land, he discovered the carcass and reconstructed it using magical runes to bind evil spirits to the bones. Should necessity arise, it can perform one less duty for its master. This is also very Shadow of the Colossus. This is... What guy is this? Phaedra? Colossus 10, maybe? It's been too long. I never memorized them initially as well. Oh, there we go. Yeah, get those anime speed lines. But yeah, so we're getting the animes. We're getting um, ports for Castlevania. And those are all fun and good. And a lot of people are really happy about that as well. I certainly am. How do I progress now? I feel like I should be able to jump to that thing, but the game doesn't let me. Um, and also Rondo of Blood because the least amount of people played it ever. Because like it was on the PC Engine, that was a very very scant console for people to actually get access to. Oh God! Oh, interesting. Cool. Okay, not bad. Um, so yeah, we're getting Castlevania anime updates, and we're getting ports, which is good. No new games, but, eh, you know, not that much that can be done about that. There we go. Um, and then now, Castlevania, or, uh... Konami, rather, is finally doing something with... Shit, fuck. Castlevania is finally doing something with um, Silent Hill, and we're getting, you know... Stuff from Silent Hill. We're getting... It's weird, because they announced five fucking Silent Hill projects. They announced a remake, a new game, a movie, and then two other things. I don't even know what they are. Why am I bugging out? Is this not the right way? Do I go this way first? Ah, I see.
Uh huh. Cool. Um. But yeah. I'm a Metal Gear fan. Metal Gear is actually my favorite, like, franchise ever of all time. Wait, is this not the right way? Because if that's the case, why did they let me come here? Oh, should I be standing here and hitting it? No, I can't bring out the whip. I'm hitting the button. This is confusing. Maybe more confusing than it should be. Than it needs to be. Okay. So do we go here? I don't understand. Like, look, maybe there's something I'm missing and that's, you know, my fault. But I feel like legibility in games is really important. Why should the fact that, like, I can't tell what I'm supposed to be doing be stopping me? I should be able to tell what I'm doing no matter what it is. This is unusual, you know? But yeah, I'm hopeful for more Metal Gear content just at some point. But yeah, it almost feels like, you know, Konami was like, oh yeah, Silent Hill is like our flagship thing that everyone loves. Oh, there's this. I can stand here. What good does that do me, though? Oh, the movement is actually kind of beautiful. What? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. This is further up the, the bones, I think. Yeah. Where is the head exactly? I guess the speed lines are coming in from the left side of the screen. This is kind of cool, I guess. Oh, what? Dude, come on. All right. I'm going to cut this episode here. Just because, like... This is a bit excessive. I'll come back whenever I have some more content for you. But until then, I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Thank you for watching. I hope you had a good time. I know that I did. Bye.